Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, of course, is going to be a gig log, but as you guys probably saw from the title, I'm going to be focusing a little bit today based on users' requests from previous videos. I want to get back to you guys, give you guys as much info as possible. So the best kind of recommendation I saw from the last video is to go into a little bit of the backup, the systems in place that I have that if something were to go wrong, how do I recover from that? And what have I considered in terms of things that can go wrong? So I have done a lot of this because over my 10 years of doing this professionally, I've had many things go wrong and had to act on the fly to be able to figure things out. So first things first though, we're in the office because the first thing and the most important thing as a DJ is your music. So this is the essence, the beginnings of backing up and making sure you have everything ready to go. Backing up your music is the most important thing and having your music on multiple devices, if one were to go bad, super important. So I'm in the office here and I don't have uh, my laptops with me because they're in the uh, truck right now ready to go out to do this wedding. But I do have my desktop here and what I can show you is all the music is backed up on the cloud via iTunes. So right here on my beautiful ultra wide, I wanted to show you guys, this is iTunes. And if you can see right there, I have a cloud symbol by every single one of the songs in my library. And you can see right here, this is Alyssa and Jarrett's folder for today's wedding. Um, I can go into music in maybe a different video to talk about how I organize all my music, but I have all of my music in iTunes. That's how I categorize everything with my folders, with my playlist. I don't use Serato internally. I use everything in iTunes, and that's mostly because I started on Virtual DJ and I switched to uh, uh, Serato, and sometimes I like to go back, and sometimes I like to just play off of iTunes. I find iTunes to be very helpful for organizing my music, mostly because of this one feature called iTunes Match. And I don't think a lot of people know about this service. It's a service that they announced probably eight years ago, and it died off after a few years, like they didn't push it or anything, but it's really sick. So what happens is you pay a yearly subscription for iTunes Match, and what it does is, it tries to match the songs in your library with songs that iTunes has, but us DJs, a lot of our shit is edits. We have intro, outro edits, and all these fancy stuff that they don't have. So what it does is it basically uploads my whole entire library to the cloud and then syncs it across all of my devices that also have iTunes on it. So my other Windows laptops that I use, my iPod, my iPad, all of the music is synced across all of them via the cloud in the exact order, the exact playlist, the folders that I have. And I can tell you this is such a like niche feature that they don't advertise it because the way you get to it is you go to store and then you gotta scroll all the way to the bottom and look down here, you will find iTunes match right there, right, right there. So if I'm trying to click on it right here. So iTunes match, uh, basically, Right there, add this computer to your iCloud sharing devices. Um, this computer is actually already added. This is probably just a bug. Um, but basically, like I said, it'll, it'll literally sync everything across all your computers. And then all you have to do for like this event is go into the folder for Alyssa and Jarrett and then select all, right click it and click download and it'll download all the tracks that you need to that device. Super helpful, this is how I sync all of my music across all of my devices so that I always have the same playlist on every single computer. So if one of my computers were to go down, I always have two laptops at my events and an iPad and an iPod. So if my main laptop goes down on Serato, I just pull up my backup laptop and I literally open up Serato on it and I'm good to go because all of my playlists are in the same exact order as they are on the other computer. And it's synced literally every single, like every time I open up the computer, they sync the same. There's nothing to do, it just happens in the background. It is by far the best feature I have ever used in my DJ career. It's so, so stinking helpful and not many people know about it. iTunes Match, highly, highly recommend it. Um, there are other methods like Dropbox, Google Drive. I use Google Drive as well to back up all my music to the cloud and I share that amongst all my other DJs as well in my company. Um, but yeah, have a backup, especially a cloud backup as well to all of your music. I also download all of my music onto a hard drive as well. So there's that. But music, I, I literally have spent the first part of this video to explain this because it is super important to have your music backed up on multiple devices 
for your events. So I came out here to the trailer and the truck because I wanted to talk about systems because it is a form of backup in a way. Having a system in place for loading your gear into your vehicle is super critical so you don't forget anything. So I have it, it's in the garage. There is a check sheet for every single one of the things that I offer from just general reception to ceremony, up lighting, movers, totems, and it has a list of everything that needs to be taken for those events or for those items. But I do want to talk about kind of condensing your stuff. Find a way to condense your stuff into bigger items um, so that it's easier to transport. I know you guys that have a car, it's a little harder to do that because you want to keep things light and easy to carry. But if you do have the advantage of a trailer or a truck where you can fit bigger things, it's very helpful so that you have one thing that has a lot of things within it so that you don't forget them. And kind of what I'm talking about, for our basically today's wedding, we are doing the reception. So I always bring along my audio rack right here. This thing has all of the cables we're ever going to need for any event. We have XLRs, we have adapters, we have power cables all built into it with all of our audio stuff. And you'll see that at the event here shortly. Then we have Burfa. Burfa is my custom turntable booth. Not much to say there. Basically, you guys can have controller all set and ready to go. Speakers, very condensed. We got the two LDs. But like I said, all the cables, all the little stuff is in this big compact item, which makes me know confidently that I have everything just by taking this one item. You guys could create an individual tote with all of your cables in it, but that way you have a tote set with all the little things so that way you don't forget them over here today is the ceremony so i know i need to bring a speaker need to bring a table need to bring a scrim need to bring the audio rack system for the ceremony that's our ceremony rack i have an extra mic today so i need to bring an extra mic jackery to power because we're out in the middle of nowhere and uh down there is the dmx kit that's for the reception up lighting up lighting is in these nice eight unit cases i just got to bring two make sure they're charged and ready to go and uh, that's pretty much it. I always keep totems in the trailer because um, I don't have much space in the garage and they fit perfectly in here. And I just like systems from a visual standpoint. I can walk in the trailer, I can easily go through it with my checklist and make sure I got everything ready to go. On the bag side, this is some of the stuff that you always forget, like your clothes, like your laptops. Well, not hopefully not your laptop, but the smaller things are always the things that you're going to forget. So having a system in place for the smaller things is critical. So in the back seat of the truck, I basically have everything ready to go. Basically, I have my main DJ bag that has my DJ laptop, my iPad, my paperwork for the day already printed out, ready to go, headphones, and any miscellaneous cables that I might need. Then I have my other jetpack bag. These are all jetpack bags. This is my personal daily bag. So this has my backup computer in it, which happens to be my daily laptop so this bag is always with me when i'm leaving in the truck to go to a meeting going to a consultation just going out in general always bring this bag along with me because i'll have my laptop my charger for that laptop and i always keep my camera stuff in here as well so this is kind of my go-to bag for daily and then we have my clothes bag this always has my shoes in it i always keep my dj shoes my nice dress shoes are always in this bag they never leave this bag and then up here i have some miscellaneous stuff to look good look fresh all of this never leaves this bag. And then I always put my clothes in below this. And then I bring along my dress shirt and my coat for the day. So systems, systems are critical. Anyways, Gabe just showed up. We're gonna go eat some Chipotle that just arrived and uh, we're gonna head on out to the event. What's up everyone? Of course, we made it to Splendor Pond. As I mentioned, we've been here about a million times. You know, we did the sound install here. If you didn't know we did the sound install, there's a whole two, I think two or three videos on this channel doing that. All set up, we'll go over that here in a minute, but we're gonna go down to ceremony because that has more things that we can talk about in terms of backup. One nice part about Splendor Pond is you get to park right outside the venue. You guys know at events where like there's no space to store your, uh, your equipment, so basically you have to store your equipment inside of your vehicle and normally have to park in the middle of nowhere, but at this place, you get to put it right there. I mean, the best benefit would be able to store your, your like cases and stuff inside the venue, so that way when it's time to break down, you can just grab them and then you gotta go get your car later. It's really nice when the venue lets you keep your vehicle close by so it's quick and easy to access your stuff. You guys have been there before. Anyways, this is the Rose Garden at Splendor Pond. We've never actually been down here to, um, to do a ceremony. I think Marcellus has, I have not. Down here is the equipment, and I'm already noticing that I didn't grab any cables to hook any of this up. Bummer. All right, so we're down here at the ceremony, and uh, going with the theme of the video, we're gonna talk about the ceremony setup in terms of backup. One note today, we are not doing the music at the ceremony. There will be a piano 
instrumental something playing for this we're just doing the mics let's go through the ceremony so if you've seen the recent videos you will understand the backup that is already in place with the ceremony rig that we have so the, today though we're, it's a little different because we do have a third mic in addition which is why the setup is very beneficial with the fact that we've switched over now to the jackery and uh we are running off a of battery today so the jackery is our source of power this thing is completely overkill in terms of what we're going to need in terms of power for this event because all it is running is the mics um, this is the old edition of this that also has the colorado sound line battery built into it we're not using that we're using the jackery um, we're running three audio technica 3000 fourth gens the best backup you can ever have with microphones is good ass microphones these are industry standard to some degree they're comparable to the best shures on the market audio technica 3000 fourth gens lapels handhelds those are the best things you can get. So there's not really much you can do in terms of backup here for the mics because the mics are what they are. The best thing you can do though, in terms of making sure you have the best situation to avoid dropouts is to um, sync your mics as last minute as you can. When phones come into the ceremony location, there will be some frequency interference to some degree, um, no matter what mics you're using. Cell towers and all that do cause a little bit, especially in the market, in the landscape frequencies that we exist in today, that is how that all works. Best thing you do is wait until the last thing. So what I do is I actually will take the lapels and run just the lapel microphone on the officiant, on the groom, and I won't put the body pack on them until we are literally about ready to go. So I will sync them as last minute as I can when some people are here. I had to stop for a second, but yes, the, the best thing you can do is to sync the body packs as last minute as you can. Hopefully there's a good amount of people already sitting down so that way you can uh, sync and on these mics, and you should check if your mics can do it because you really need mics that can do it. They scan for the available frequencies to work with. So scan for the most available frequency as late as you can. That's the best way to prevent any sort of dropout at your events and also make sure you have fresh batteries in your mics. That's all you can do really in terms of backup. In terms of music backup, this system does have another element to it. Because this is running all off the Jackery and the LD Systems Maui 5 Go is a battery powered speaker in itself, you have a backup that for some reason, if that dies, you forgot to charge it or whatever, you can come over here, you can hit the Bluetooth or you can plug in an aux and start playing music off of your backup music source like an iPad or an iPod. Hate to say it, I actually ran into that one time where I forgot to charge my rack before the ceremony. Forgot, I didn't really think it was gonna be a battery powered one. So I charged as much as I could beforehand when I noticed I needed to do that. And um, let's just say we made it through vowels, thankfully, and we were at the finishing home run stretch, literally like, a, like 30 seconds left, minute left in the, the ceremony. The mic unit all drops out, battery goes out. I run over with my iPad to the LED systems Maui 5 Go, connect to it, and literally as the officiant, thankfully the officiant had a loud voice, so he picked up his voice a little bit when the mics cut off. Thank the Lord to him. I basically hit the music. It was like, I think you shook me all night long or something like that. Hit it, brought the volume up. They exited the ceremony. No one knew anything happened. No one noticed, no one said a word save the day worked out that would have been a total killer if the music wasn't playing so a lot of times nowadays uh have yourself a backup way the fact that we have two battery powered units allows us to have backup at the ceremony but that right there is pretty much all i have for you guys at the ceremony in terms of backup making sure you have battery powered systems in place for your ceremonies is pretty crucial with a lot of venues nowadays and ceremonies in the middle of nowhere and then having multiple things battery powered gives you flexibility if something were to die or something were to go wrong, like in my case, you can do that. So backup tips at the ceremony. We're gonna go change and head up to the reception and we'll talk about more stuff up there. Continuing the theme of the backup, we need to talk about our backup at the reception. Now, of course, here at Splinter Pond, we have a built-in sound system, so we only use one speaker for dance floor fill. So it's not the best ideal situation to show you guys the backup of how the music and audio runs, but um, we've pretty much covered a lot of the reception side of backup. I mean, here we have, of course, my setup. We have the laptop. We always have a backup laptop as well. Then we go into the custom booth with the S9, the Rain 12s, as always. So let's continue the backup. The computer goes bad. 
we need to play some music in the time being or our turntables go bad we have two turntables so that's nice we can switch over and do one or switch over and do the other we can run internal and just run with the s9 by itself so we do have some backup built into that say all this goes out some reason all this goes out the lap or the laptop goes out and we need to switch laptops we can come right over here and built into it we can hook up an aux cable right here we can hook up an aux cable and just run off a phone or an ipad or something separate that's ready to go or i can plug in an aux cable to this but what i've done I also have a Bluetooth receiver because as you guys know, most phones nowadays don't have a headphone jack. So I put a Bluetooth receiver into my unit. It runs on channel 11, 12 right here. So in a pinch, if I need to hook up Bluetooth, I can do that. So there's a backup in that as well. Um, mics, same goes as always, sync beforehand. Um, I run complete overkill with the Drive Rack PA2, which allows me to kind of adjust my zones and do just nothing involved in the Drive Rack PA2 is backup in any way, shape, or form. It's just complete audio overkill. If you want more info on that, there's a whole video on my channel. Look up the Drive Rack PA2, and I'll go into detail on what all this thing could do, including anti feedback suppression. Then we have our Chave Show Express Rack. That's where we run all of our lights. I DMX all my lights, so I do have a backup up in a way that if uh, my show express goes down I can go to the lights and I can turn them on manually and put them on a color put them on sound mode and then that's a backup in a way so there's your lighting backup um, ultimately though we got to talk about the biggest thing that could go wrong at your event power you lose power whether that's you blowing a breaker or you losing complete power altogether now let's start with the blowing the breaker first thing you need to do at all venues I always try to run my system on two different circuits. One circuit for the main unit, for the audio rack and my turntable booth. One circuit for that. Speakers, I then will put on a separate circuit. One of those speakers will be on the same circuit if I have two. Ideally, I have circuits for all of this, but if you have at least two circuits, run your main rack and one speaker on one circuit run all of your subwoofers subwoofers draw the most power and if you have moving heads run your subwoofers your moving heads and your other speakers on a different circuit so that way if one circuit is to blow it's going to be that one that way everything else continues so if you blow a circuit you still have one speaker going you can go reset the circuit and continue if you're on one circuit there's not really much you can do in terms of an initial like quick changeover backup. You're gonna lose power, your whole rig's gonna go out, and you're gonna be in a pinch to try and get it back up and running. And it, most times, it's quick enough to just go reset the circuit and get it going. But the ultimate backup, if you lose power at the whole entire venue, one, like we mentioned, your up lights, they're all good to go. The second backup is battery powered options and that's why we have battery powered stuff at the ceremony. So if we lost complete power, we could bring the LD Systems Maui 5 Go up here, hook it up via Bluetooth to one of the laptops and jam out. We could also use the Jackery to power the main system so we can use the Jackery to plug in and power my Rain 12s, my S9 um, and then just run directly into the Maui. So. We gotta consider the options of backup at all, all of our cases, but like I mentioned from the beginning of this gig log, the ultimate backup starts at your music with your computers. Make sure you have multiple devices at your event at the ready to play music at all times. To give you a reference right here, this laptop of course is the main one, ready to go play music. That goes down, backup laptop number two is running lighting right here, it has all the music. Screw the lighting, lighting is the second most important thing. Audio comes first. We can pop this out, go over there. Or I have it all right here on the iPad, or I even have it on my phone, or <laughs> I can get the iPod. I have an iPod down in my thing. That's complete overkill. I, two de levels of devices is always a good backup to have. Laptop, have a backup device, whether it is an iPad, an iPod, your iPhone, or another laptop. I recommend two laptops. It's always a good idea to have two laptops in case of emergencies, but two or three levels of backup in terms of your music is the best thing you can do at your events. So I gave you guys a little bit of a tour other than talking about the speaker we're using today. Um, of course, it's the LD Systems Maui 44 G2. This thing is insane. That is a 15 inch sub. That is an array of speakers that has dedicated high drivers up top mid drivers and mid low drivers down through this thing. It's a monster, it's stupid loud. And that 15 inch sub, if you can't tell, is 
practically as big as an 18 inch sub. It's not as wide as an 18 inch sub, but it's as tall and as deep as an 18 inch sub. It's one of the biggest 15s I've ever seen. And it, it puts some output. This thing is probably just as loud as an 18 inch subwoofer. It's, it's incredible. Big shout outs to LD Systems for sending out the Maui 44 G2s for me to use at my events. That is a plug. They did send them out for me to use at my events for free. Um, but these things are phenomenal. Like, so good. So good. And the transport system, can't say enough. Good stuff from LD Systems with this uh, 44 G2. But anyways, guys, um, Cocktail, they're playing some uh, live music out there. I'll take you guys out there for a second. And then we'll get started with reception here pretty shortly. They got their own drive rack, PA2, X-Air, good stuff. And these are the cocktail vibes. Look at that, beautiful. Splendor Pond looking better and better every day I come out here. They are making this place look amazing. The landscaping coming together great. Good vibes. That was extremely lit. I'm not sure what Gabe felt. I'm tired. He, he, he was doing an excellent job in the lighting, so I'm gonna post some Instagram clips. Uh, Joe, we're gonna insert some Instagram clips right here. If I don't give them to you, please remind me to give them to you. We need Instagram clips, because this was lit. Anyways, great wedding. Uh, I do wanna show you guys a few more tips. Um, I think I've shown this before. All of our lights are wireless. We have two different DMX channels. We use 243 and 253. Don't ask me why, that's just how it's set up in Show Express. But at the end of the night, we change them to two different colors and pile them up to make it very easy to put them into our cases because we keep them separate. The top half of the case is 243, the bottom half is 253. So that way, when we're setting up, it makes things a lot easier than trying to figure it out on the fly. We already know. But anyways, LD Systems Maui 44G2, always pumping out the bass, pumping out the volume. My ear is actually slightly ringing from that one speaker, because it is extremely loud. But anyways, we're gonna get toward now. All broke down. We're done. We're, we're out. Gabe, we're out. I'm tired. You wanna race? So, this, this is a little game we play. I normally play with Dre, because he's quick. Um, but basically, there's a latch on each side of the trailer, if you guys know about trailers. So, basically, it's first one to do it wins, and I'm gonna do this one-handed. I'm done. And with that is it. We're out. Hope you guys enjoyed today's gig vlog. Hope you guys enjoyed all the tips around backup today and all the little pointers that I could give. Trying to make these more themed around tips and tricks at events. So if you guys got any suggestions, anything you guys wanna know about what I do, how I do it, leave it in the comment section down below and it might be the theme of the next gig vlog. Anyways guys, keep the record spinning. I'll see you guys next time. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace out.